in this short film, I'm going to show you how to use Beethoven's Second Piano Concerto as a creative tool in the classroom. For this task, you need to gather together whatever classroom percussion instruments you have in school. And a nice variety is the best. But if you don't have anything, don't worry, you can do the whole task using body percussion and voice. If your class are new to using instruments, take some time to explore them. And there are several ways that you can do this. One way is to place instruments around the class, split your class into small groups, send each group to one instrument, and give them a couple of minutes to make as much noise as they want. This, of course, will be noisy and it will be chaotic. So put aside one instrument, a nice loud one like a big drum, and say that that's the signal for silence. When you sound that instrument, everybody must freeze, and then send the groups on to the next instrument creating a kind of carousel. Another way to do this is to have your children sat in a big circle and to put two instruments in the middle of the circle. Then select two children to come forward and make a small conversation using those instruments. The rules for this are simple. They can do whatever they want so long as they take turns, just as if they're talking. And then you can swap children in and out, take instruments away and add more instruments and spend quite a bit of time doing this. The whole thing can be done without any instructions. You can do it all in silence. Whichever method you use, make sure that you have some feedback time. So ask your children questions like, what was their favorite instrument? Did anything surprise them? Did they invent any new sounds? You might also want to put in place a few simple rules, such as don't play when anybody's talking, put the instruments down when you want silence, and of course, have a signal for silence yourself. My favorite is to just put my hand in the air and to wait until everybody stops, even if it takes all day. Children will soon realize that they're wasting valuable playing time by messing around. Okay, it's time to start. Now, it might be useful to watch our short introductory film about Beethoven and his concerto before you get stuck in, or you might want to lead our listening activity based on movement one, or listen to movement three in full. It's only six minutes long, and it's really easy and fun to listen to. I'm joined by three amazing players from the Scottish Chamber Orchestra. They're going to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Louise and I play the timpani. Hi, I'm Sua and I play the cello. Hi, I'm Gordon, I play the violin. Explain to your class that you're going to make a piece of music with a magical shape called rondo. Rondo is a shape where one idea keeps returning and to get that idea into the children's heads, lead this quick warm up. So I need a gesture or a sound from somebody. Okay, I'm gonna call that A. I need a different gesture or a sound from somebody. That one's B, and I need one more. Mm. Great. So we're going to put them into this order. A, B, A, C, A. Off you go. Mm. That is a rondo. A, B, A, C, A. So there's an idea that keeps returning. Beethoven makes a rondo that's the same forwards and backwards. It's a palindrome. So his goes A, B, A, C, A, B, A. Let's try that. Mm. So we've just made a piece with the exact same shape as Beethoven. Now this is a chance for you to get the instruments out and to try this on instruments. There's two ways of doing this. If you've got lots of instruments, give one instrument to each child, split them into groups of three and ask them to recreate what we just did. If you've got lots of instruments that are the same, split your class into three big groups. So you might have one group that are all on drums, one group that are all on recorders, for example, one group might be stuck with body percussion and voice, and then build up your rondo using the full class. So can we make a rondo on these instruments? So that has got the exact same shape as Beethoven's piece. Beethoven's rondo begins with this tune. Now I am super lucky because I've got these two amazing players sat here with me now. If you want your children to hear that, then just play them this clip, or you can play them the full orchestra playing the beginning of the rondo like this. We 
only actually need the rhythm of that tune. So can I just hear the rhythm on one note, please? You need to teach that rhythm to your children. A really good way to teach rhythms is to use words. When we use words, we start to engage our memory and it makes the rhythms a lot more tangible than just clapping or body percussion. So the words I'm gonna use are these. Rondo rhythm keeps coming back. Rondo rhythm keeps you on track. Let's all say that together. Rondo rhythm keeps coming back. Rondo rhythm keeps you on track. The next step is to get your children to clap that rhythm. So they're clapping one clap for each syllable. I'm going to have a go at this now. It should be this. Rondo rhythm keeps coming back. Rondo rhythm keeps you on track. Now this is all sounding a bit complicated already, isn't it? So it's time to get the instruments out and I would suggest they just play that rhythm on their instrument however they want just to get that into the room. You might at this point want to watch the orchestra play this movement so that they hear that rhythm over and over again. It does come back a lot during the piece. If you've got instruments that have got notes on them, I suggest that you stick to just the white notes and just C, D, E, F and G or even just a few of those, just C and E. This is what it sounds like just using one of those notes. It might be fun to split the instrument between two different players, especially if you haven't got that many instruments. So then it would sound like this. If you've got lots of drums or unpitched percussion in your class, you might want to add a pulse. So Louise is going to add a pulse on top of what we've already got. So you really need to make this tune your own. You need to make a class version of the tune and you can add to it whatever you want. If you want to add new rhythms, singing, body percussion, a fancy ending, go for it, whatever you want. But we've, we've got our version now and I'm gonna clap along. Let's, let's do it one more time. And make sure that you name that Section A. You might even want to write on the board a list of events, what happens and who's playing what, because you don't want the children to start swapping instruments at this stage. Then split your class into two teams and name them B and C. And their job is really simple. They just have to make a short contrasting section. So they can do whatever they want, so long as it contrasts with what you've already got. So if what you've already got is loud, they might want to do something that's soft. If what you've already got is fast, they might want to do something that's slow. If you're really excited about using different pitches, you could move from C, D, E, F, G to black notes if you've got them, or you could move just up a bit to G, A, B, C, D. Or if that's too complicated, don't, don't worry about it. So we've had a go at this. Louise and me have made a B section. I'm using a chime bar now. Our B section sounds like this. And Sua and Gordon have made a C section that sounds like this. So now we've got everything we need to make Beethoven's palindrome rondo. So let's really make sure we know what we're doing. With your children, it will be an A section that's played by everyone. Then a B section, which is played by half of the class. Here, it's just me and Louise. Then we're back to the A section, that's everyone. Then the C section, for you, that's the other half of the class. For us, it's Sue and Gordon. Back to the A section, back to the B section, back to the A section on the end. If that seems complicated, play this game. Put your hand up when I say the bit that you're in. A section. B section, A section, C section, A section, B section, A section. We're in almost everything. <laughs> so our rondo, our full piece, sounds like this.
So if you follow these steps slowly and carefully with your class, you will create a piece of music inspired by Beethoven's second piano concerto and using the magical shape of a rondo. And when you've done all that, record it or perform it to another class. Or you could even do a class assembly where you tell everybody about this amazing man called Beethoven. Now, if you're thinking, well, that's all very well and good, but I don't have these instruments and I'm frightened of everybody having an instrument. It just feels a bit like it might be chaotic. You can do this whole thing just using body percussion and voice. And so to prove it, we're going to put our instruments down or put them safe. Can we make that full rondo just using our bodies and our voices? Should we try it? The, the full piece. Let's go. <laughs> 